thank you very much for the introduction. My goal here in the conference is to share what we have learned uh, from the COVID-19 cyber attacks. And uh, uh, I'm trying to here to uh, share with everybody uh, what uh, organizations, countries, uh, entities, uh, even IT companies should uh, follow uh, based on those experiences. Um, so a little bit of WHO, the World Health Organization. Uh, I just wanted to remind that our mission, we work uh, 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 completely to promote health uh, keep the world safe and serve the vulnerable. So those are the three uh, motivating factors for us to work in the World Health Organization. On the cyber, uh, cyber attacks during the COVID-19, um, it shows that uh, technologies uh, to identify, to protect, to detect, respond and recover are really not, not uh, very, very important, but not sufficient. And this is what I'd like to share with you because the perspective of the digital technology imposes a different way of thinking, not only from the user perspective, but also from the IT side. And uh, we invested a lot in technologies. We invested in migrating and upgrading the technology OSs, so Windows, Linux, uh, and Microsoft uh, OSs but we do very little to upgrade the human OS. So the human OS is the, our ability to really use the digital assets on the internet. And it is not only about training and awareness. So I'm gonna speak a little bit more and how this is interconnected with all the uh, cybersecurity technologies that we uh, are, are implementing, we are working, uh, but also uh, we need to talk about the behavior and how the user behavior needs to change and the IT behavior needs to change. The IT community uh, believes that uh, systems are safe and they don't openly acknowledge the system's vulnerabilities. How many of you uh, really uh, noticed the number of patches, the number of updates of your smartphone or your computer? The number of updates uh, increase over time, not decrease over time. So that shows that uh, it's a recognition that uh, intrinsically, IT systems are vulnerable and you need to really have an approach from the human perspective and from the technology perspective. And this is what I'm gonna share with you uh, during this presentation. And I wanted to point out that humans are the weakest and the uh, strongest links in cybersecurity. We need to look at always both sides. This slide shows a very clear evidence that cybersecurity attacks uh, are in preparation by the advanced persistent threat groups. Uh, I got this uh, information from a good friend, Alex Urbelis, which is an ethical hacker and cyber lawyer. And as you can see, he started collecting uh, data. And what data he collected? He collected new website domains registrations with corona or COVID-19 in the name. And that number, 1,468 in February, was already a very high number compared to a lot of other uh, world events. And American events, the NFL will not be even closer to that. However, in March, it jumped to 76,000. So try to imagine. Uh, it, it's unheard in the internet history of so many uh, uh, new websites being created with uh, the corona and COVID-19. And it, as you can see, it decreased over time, but it came back to the same level as February. So try to imagine the number of websites that are being created. And the majority of those are malicious. There, there is a malicious intent. Of course, there is some percentage that people or government organization companies created those websites to really uh, help. But the, I, the majority of those uh, sites were created to start phishing attacks, 
to start attacks in one way or another that APT groups are developing. So be aware uh, that the number of future attacks will only increase, not decrease. In order to protect uh, um, your organization, uh, I detected or I recommended key nine important components of an integrated cybersecurity program. So the number one that is quite important is to put your program and to shape the uh, protection for your organization looking at the identity management. So everything needs to be connected to the identity. Uh, and that is a very important uh, element. Uh, privilege access management also very important because when an attacker uh, gets inside of an organization, the attacker try to move laterally and one objective is to get privilege access. So having that managed uh, is very important. The third uh, key important component is multi-factor authentication for all IT services. The idea is to eliminate the distinction of access from internal or external of your network. So that idea that if you're inside of your network, you're safe is completely destroyed. So if you haven't enabled yet, do it, uh, because this is a layer of security that uh, in combination with identity and privilege access is essential. The fourth layer or key uh, important component is password management solution for IT professionals and users. In WHO, we uh, advise uh, every person uh, to in, start using password management, not only for the organization, but also at home, because if they are protected at home, if they protected their families, it, it will eventually change the behavior and will protect them from writing down passwords or creating passwords that are very easy or short. Uh, passwords uh, nowadays needs to be more than 20 characters. So you cannot remember uh, and make it unique for each system. So you need a password management. The fifth element is a bigger one from the IT perspective, which, which is enabling a, a SOC, a security operations center, integrated and needs to be integrated with uh, cyber, uh, uh, security information and event management, vulnerability management, including patch management, because as soon as you detect, you can really fix or trying to understand uh, what's going on in your organization through logs and events. You need to in include the component, which is the threat intelligence to look at from the in inside of your organization from the outside, what are the threats? And with, with that, similar to the example of the number of uh, websites being created with Corona uh, uh, and uh, COVID-19, this is a piece of threat intelligence from the external. Essential, essential endpoint detection response for any device. If you don't have that, you, are, we will, you will be operating your organization without a radar without your eyes. The endpoint detection response is essential to detect and to really respond to a, a threat. Uh, the last element connected with the SOC is the cloud proxy for any device. So as soon as a device interacts with the internet, you need to have that layer of protection. The six Important element is the DMARC, the domain-based message authentication report and conformance. We, WHO, we had a lot of uh, uh, emails being impersonated up to May, around 5 million email impersonations globally uh, per month. So what we had was a lot of uh, email impersonation. And after the implementation of uh, DMARC, we reduced significantly. So it dropped by 70%. I recommend any organization, any company to implement DMARC. So email impersonation will be eliminated on the internet. Unfortunately, email was not designed to be secure. And so impersonation is quite easy to do. 
and the technology is to enable the market. And it's a very simple technology can be done in 30 days. We did it. The seventh element is more than 90% of the attacks happen through email uh, uh, links and attachments. So somebody sends an email and uh, you're gonna rely on the user training to not click on the email or to not open the attachment. And sometimes depending on the context, that is very difficult. So there's an advanced protection on email. There are multiple vendors doing that. I recommend you to explore. Remote access, try to always use a browser. So if you need to do a remote access, avoid uh, uh, as a client on, on the desktop because that will be more secure if you do that over the browser because you have all the protections. And the last one, but not the least, let's talk about legacy things, but still necessary. VPN and firewalls. They are very important, but in my view, they are legacy because we are moving to a zero trust strategy. So there is no perimeter no safe place inside of any organization. So if you, if you implement all nine uh, recommendations, uh, it, it will be fantastic and you'll be able to uh, be prepared for what's coming, which is uh, uh, after the pandemic, uh, the new dynamic in the market uh, exists and the APTs continue to, APT groups continue to uh, uh, inv invade or uh, sending multiple threats and, and the threats increase in, in volume and complexity. So you need to be prepared. In order to prepare and tr tr trying to talk about technology is not enough because I gave you nine advices from the technology perspective. So now the human factor plays a big role. So the typical one is, everybody knows, cybersecurity awareness program. So do training, regular phishing exercises, and briefing. But that's not only it. Uh, a strong policy and governance connected with upper management and approved by upper management and supported by upper management will help you to get all those nine recommendations plus the awareness from the user in, into effect and, and being able to govern. And all that integrated into risk management of your organization or at least what you do because uh, zero risk doesn't exist. So the program is to upgrade the human OS because people need to understand that the risk is up to the level that the organization is willing to take. And, and this is how we change the behavior and how we can upgrade the human OS from the management's point of view, from the IT point of view, and from the user's point of view. So uh, in this way of how to help professionals and users, uh, uh, we, we can do a lot more to improve uh, security defenses. So on the prevention, on the protection and response. Uh, I organized here seven uh, elements here uh, to really help you. Uh, one element is to manage human risk by changing digital behaviors from IT professionals and users. Using all those nine elements, the, the key important element components, and plus the the other three ones that are more connected with the human. So you need to have that in mind in your program. Uh, implement and maintain a cybersecurity awareness program, which is very important. Start to think about building a red team and a blue team. So it creates checks and balances within the organization. So the red team behaves as the attacker and the blue team behaves as the defender and trying to prevent. And if you have that in your organization, you're gonna be stronger. Recognize and mitigate IT products in processes vulnerabilities. So from the risk owner perspe perspective, that is the vulnerability understanding uh, that all software, all systems ha will have vulnerabilities and also the uh, ability to patch and to correct uh, those vulnerabilities in, in a 
in a correct way, uh, or, or at least addressing the severe and significant risks. Uh, promote and perform software update continuously. So that is part of the program. Enable rapid response, so that is key. If there is an attack, you have a rapid response and you'll be able to do that. And recognize and address pot pot potential conflicts of interest. IT wants to enable business. Cybersecurity wants to reduce risk to the minimum. So you need to understand that there is a potential conflict of interest in moving fast or moving slow. And again, the idea of being able to uh, implement things up to the risk that the organization is willing to take. So some key tips to protect you and your family. So again, I spoke about the technology, I spoke about the people, and now let's talk a little bit about the people close to you and your family. So three simple things that you can um, um, tell them to do. Use long and unique passwords for every service. So passphrase is the best, 20 characters or more. Uh, a, a very uh, interesting thing that is long with multiple words will be good enough. Uh, and again, unique for each system, personal or work. And second, how can you, I memorize so many passwords? Again, using a password management or password vault, we give some suggestions that are free and there are some that you pay for, but start using password vault, password management. This will save your life and save the life of your family. And the third part is always use token. So dual factor authentication, multi-factor authentication, doesn't matter how you call, you need to have something that changes over time very quickly, and you have a way to verify uh, using uh, a Google or Microsoft Authenticator or another in a smartphone. And with that, you can prevent that if there is an attack, if there is a, a password leak, uh, they don't have access to your systems. So again, your family. So protect your family thinking about enabling the culture of uh, dual factor authentication, enabling the culture of password management, and be uh, concerned about having unique and long passwords for every system. So <clears throat> in, uh, uh, in summary, uh, cybersecurity technologies are very important, but not sufficient. Um, the human OS upgrade is really required. So we can be safe on the internet and it is not only about training and awareness. And the idea here is to make sure that uh, the community, the IT community uh, must openly ac uh, accept and acknowledge that systems are vulnerable. So systems vulnerabilities are there. So it's, it's real and you cannot make it safe, a system safe by magic. And finally, humans are the weakest and strongest links in cybersecurity. So that is basically my message. And I, I wanted to stop sharing. So uh,